This is going to be about why Disney is devilish. And this is one of those things that isn't going to make friends, it's just going to make everyone mad at you. But before I got saved, I was completely clueless to the evils of this world. And Paul doesn't hesitate to call this world this present evil world in Galatians 1.4. And 1 Timothy 6.10 says, The love of money is the root of all evil. And Disney is making a lot of money. They are also filling your children's head with doctrines of devils. I want to look at the Bible and shine the light of the word on Disney. But number one, I believe Disney is devilish because they endorse the forbidden practices that are found in the Bible. And if you look at Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 10, it says, There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch. Did you know the Disney movies are full of witches? The Disney movies make witches look cool and acceptable to young children in their movies like Maleficent. Not only is Maleficent a witch, but she also has long horns that proceed out of her head. Why does Disney want to make their characters look like such evil things and put these evil things in front of the eyes of children? If you read the Old Testament, you will see how witches were supposed to be killed according to the law. In Exodus 22:18, it says, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. But now on Halloween and in the Disney movies, the witches are not talked against. They're celebrated. People will buy tickets to go see movies that are about these abominations and even bring their children to see it. But Proverbs 22, 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. And I don't see how taking your 8-year-old daughter to see movies like Maleficent is training her up in the way she should go. 1 Samuel fifteen twenty three says, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And kids are rebellious enough without you taking them to see movies about witches who are rebels against God and against God's word. There is no such thing as a good witch or as good magic. And we can see the devil can trick people into believing sorcery is a good thing. He tricks people into believing that there are good witches and that there's good magic. And that magic is acceptable like on America's Got Talent where they have all these magicians. But Acts chapter 9 or Acts chapter 8, verses 9 through 11 says, But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery, and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. They said, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard, because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. So these people applied the evil works of this man. They said it was the power of God. When you claim there are good witches, you are doing the same thing. When Jesus was on earth in the flesh, wicked men said his power came from Beelzebub. They said this man cast out devils by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. And the world is so twisted that they will say the works of Jesus Christ are satanic and the works of a witch are good and godly. They think backwards. They will claim these Disney movies are great for kids with such a great message and yet they hate what the Bible says. They would label a faithful watchman or preacher or teacher as hateful for speaking out against the wickedness of the Disney movies. So they think backwards from the way that things really are. The reason for this is because of what's found in 1 Corinthians 2.14. It gives the explanation for this. It says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Not only this, but their minds are blinded by the God of this world. And the God of this world isn't the one sitting in the third heaven. The God of this world is the devil. And I believe the witchcraft being packaged as sweet and innocent is doing nothing but further preparing the world for the end times. If you look at the book of Revelation, you will see how these abominations are done all the way up into the time 
people called the tribulation. In Revelation 9.21 it says, Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries. So this wicked practice is going all the way up until the end. And they don't want to repent of their sorceries today. And they won't repent of them in the future. Webster's Dictionary defines sorceries as magic, enchantment, witchcraft, divination, be the assistance of evil spirits, or the power of commanding evil spirits. If you type list of Disney witches, if you type that in on a search engine like Google, then you will see tons of witch-like characters that are in these Disney movies. And if you go to Walmart or Target and go to the children's books, you will see a book called Mal's Spellbook. I was in Walmart and Target and they both have this book. And I was looking through the book and you can see all types of wicked spells and talking about being evil and the all-seeing eye and all types of other satanic symbolism. And this is right there in the children's books for your children to pick it up and read it. And parents are so stupid and are so blind to the word of God that they will, they will buy this stuff for their kids. But this stuff is in plain sight in your small town. This, it's not like I live in some big city. I live in a very small town. And I went to Walmart and was able to pick up a spell book for children. That's how far we've gone. And it isn't just witches. It's magic in general that is the theme of Disney. Why do you think they have the magic kingdom? What Disney cartoon doesn't feature some kind of magic? They also have genies. The movie Aladdin has a genie in a bottle who grants wishes. He can shapeshift, similar to Satan who transforms himself into an angel of light. And that is why these movies are so deceptive because Satan transforms himself into an angel of light and his ministers into ministers of righteousness. How did Satan beguile Eve? Through his subtlety. And if you look at Ex Exodus 7, 10 and 11, it says, And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, now the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. So to a certain extent, the magicians and sorcerers could copy the powers God gave to Moses. Sorcerers and magicians are so wicked because they are doing the supernatural without the help of God. Their help comes from Satan. As you can see, the Disney movies are godless. God isn't even a factor in these movies. That in itself is wicked. The movies are wicked because of the absence of God. God is absent in these movies because men want to do what they want. They don't want a final authority. They don't want to have to answer to anybody. And that's why they make movies that are godless. Movies like Frozen may not lead your kid into magic and witchcraft, but it will definitely desensitize their mind to the wicked things of this world. We know it's fantasy. We're not stupid. But we don't need to fantasize about things that are against the Bible. The Disney movies are all about telling children to use their imagination. How many times have you heard that saying in these stupid kid mo kids movies, use your imagination? But as sinful creatures, our imaginations are evil. Genesis 6, 5 says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Genesis 8, 21 says, For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. How much more so today from your youth up you are put in front of a TV screen to watch forbidden practices that are repackaged to be sweet and innocent. If you just sit around and imagine stuff all day, Pretty much everything you're going to be imagining is probably wicked. Unless you are thinking about something you've read in the Bible and setting your affection on things above as the Bible talks about. But for someone who's just sitting around and watching filthy movies, their imaginations are going to be evil. Jeremiah 13.10 says, This evil people 
which refuse to hear my words, which walk in the imagination of their heart, and walk after other gods to serve them and to worship them, shall even be as this girdle which is good for nothing. So there it talks about the imagination of the heart. It walks after other gods to serve them and worship them. But number two, I believe Disney is devilish because of the sex perversion. For instance, the Disney movies always have a character that is half human and half animal. Like Beauty and the Beast or The Little Mermaid. Even non-animated movies like Parrots of the Caribbean have some type of character that's half human, half animal. In the movie Moana, the Moana character is a demigod, which means she is half human and half god. A godlike creature had to fornicate with a human. And these are weird things you are letting your children watch. If the female character in the Beauty and the Beast movies was a real character that lived back in the Old Testament times under the law, then she would have been put to death. Look at Leviticus 20.15. It says, And if a man lie with a beast, he shall surely be put to death, and you shall slay the beast. I know people believe I am being crazy and overboard, Yet they are the ones letting their daughter watch a girl kiss a dog in the mouth in movies like Beauty and the Beast, which is weird to me. It isn't just bestiality, it is also sodomy, which, was, which is what people call homosexuality. The new Beauty and the Beast movie supposedly has a sodomite character in the movie. So it is nothing but sexual perversion that God considers an abomination. Yet churches are probably taking their youth groups to see these movies since they are rated G and PG. They think they're okay because they don't have any discernment about what's right and wrong. And what about the Peter Pan movies? Have you not heard of the false god Pan? You do know that god Pan is a pedophile. And in movies like Chronicles of Narnia and Pan's Labyrinth, there is a character that is a half goat, half man. And that's Pan. He leads little girls off by themselves into pr a private place away from their parents. Which is what Peter Pan does with Wendy in the movie. Peter Pan climbed into her window and led her off to some other world without her parents knowing about it. And why would you let your daughter watch it? And this is all factual stuff about the god Pan. You can look it up and read it. If you don't believe what I'm say saying, then research this. Do your own research. Look up the origin of Peter Pan. Uh, he takes the little girl character into a world where she won't ever grow old. And this is a counterfeit of heaven. In heaven, we won't ever grow old or die. But not only this, but not ever growing old is a false hope for this current world that we're in now. In this world, people don't want to grow up and take on responsibilities. Yet in this current world we're in, we aren't in heaven and we need to grow up. 1 Corinthians 13, 11 says, When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Uh, the whole idea of Peter Pan is against the Bible and it teaches rebellion. Disney loves sodomites and lesbians so much that they will cast sexual perverts to do the voices of their characters. The Finding Nemo movies has... Ellen Degenerate doing the voice of one of the fishes. Shows on the Disney Channel like Good Luck Charlie, Doc McStuffins, The Lodge, and a cartoon called Star vs. the Forces of Evil, which that's a horrible sounding title for a cartoon. All these shows have sodomite and lesbian characters, and they normalize sex perversion. And so far you have seen bestiality, pedophilia, and homosexuality in Disney movies. In the Bible, the Apostle Paul calls homosexuality vile affections, and he refers to it as unnatural. If you look at Romans 1, 26 and 27, it says, For this cause God gave them up into vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. In the older Disney movies, they did many things that were hidden in the background. Now they are doing the majority of it in your face where your kids can see it. And this is because the parents are desensitized from watching the older Disney movies. 
so they don't see anything wrong with it. They grew up watching MTV and HBO and Showtime and Cinemax. Imagine what the kids of this generation will let their children watch when they get older. And where do you draw the line? If the Bible is the final authority and the Bible is our standard, then we should live by the guidelines laid out in the Bible and not stray from what it says. But in the older Disney movies, it was hidden. In The Lion King, you could see scenes of male genitals and the word sex spelled out in the sand. And in the Aladdin movie, you could hear the genie tell the girl to take off her clothes. The list goes on and on with the hidden profanity in the movies. And they'll say, well, we just threw that in there because the parents would pick up on it and they would be more entertained by the movie. And the reason they are after your children so much is because the devil and devils like to go after the weakest link. It's always been that way. Eve was the weaker one, so Satan tempted Eve. And there is a story in Mark chapter 9 about a devil-possessed son. In Mark 9, 20 and 21, it says, And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child. So you can see the devil came to his son when he was a child. And that's because the devil likes to get you while you're young. So Disney disguises sex perversion and witchcraft as a good thing. And they market it to your kids. If the profane things are noticed or mentioned by someone, then Disney will quickly say something stupid like, we just put that stuff in there to entertain the parents that are watching. And that's another problem. What makes you think, as a parent, you should be entertained by filth? Do we get to a certain age where it's acceptable for uh, sodomy and bestiality and pedophilia and all the wicked things like witches to be entertainment to us? And But number three, Disney is devilish because evil creatures are portrayed as good guys. What is up with Disney and dragons? You have all these movies you grew up with about dragons like Mulan and Peach Dragon, Puff the Magic Dragon. Uh, I don't think this movie's Disney, but Shrek has dragons. Pharaoh is called a dragon in Ezekiel 29.3 and the devil has a dragon. Is, or He's portrayed as a great red dragon in Revelation 12. Dragons are negative in the Bible. They aren't good, cr good creatures. Uh, Satan in his natural state is a great red dragon. But Disney will make a dragon character a friend to your children. Uh, DreamWorks does the same thing in the movie How to Train Your Dragon. In the movie Pinocchio, a man gives life to a wooden doll and the wooden boy has a problem with lying. So just like the father of lies, the devil, he has a problem with lying. And this is just... Like how the second beast in the book of Revelation gives life unto the image of the first beast. The Antichrist is a liar and the second beast is said to give life to his image. So Pinocchio is the image that is given life. You see how Disney just can't get around the Bible. Revelation 13:15 says, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Everything Disney has, the Bible has. I mean, if you want to be entertained, read the Bible. Disney and other children's networks are full of strange creatures and characters that are painted as sweet and innocent, yet these things are evil. Things like ogres, elves, smurfs, friendly giants, and so on and so forth are all connected with devils and evil spirits. But number four, Disney is devilish because it has become idolatry. If you go in a young person's room, you might see Disney trinkets, posters, toys, bed sheets, sneakers, shirts, and wallpaper. Disney is everywhere. You can't escape it no matter how hard you try. It is on diapers, food items, in the schools, on underwear. If you have a kid, then you know what I'm talking about. The relatives will buy them a whole bunch of Disney presents and then you have to hurt the kids' feelings when you take them away. You can tell the relatives you don't want the devilish trash for your kids, but they buy it anyway. 
and that is just the spirit of this wicked age. And they will get mad because entertainment is their God, and they don't want to be under conviction when you smack their God of entertainment. I can't keep my kid from seeing Disney, but I don't have to let her watch it in my house. Sure, she will see it everywhere out in public, like she'll see every other wicked thing out in the stores. They play dirty music, people dress t terribly, but she doesn't have to see these things in your home. The Disney curse is so much on our world that it is almost impossible for your kid not to be affected by Disney. The grandparents, aunts, and uncles will continue to buy your kids Mickey Mouse toys and Disney DVDs. I still find things today Disney related in my daughter's room that I didn't even know were Disney. Uh, I don't believe everyone who has Disney s stuff or toys are bad people. They just aren't aware of the issue. Or their family just keeps buying their kids so much Disney stuff that they can't keep up with it. Disney is something that has always seemed good and safe for, ch for children. And no one ever expects it of being evil. I'm not telling you to even go and throw your kids Disney toys away. But you need to be aware that most of the Disney stuff is evil and from Satan. And I wouldn't even say Disney is only a work of the flesh. I believe spirits are in, involved and behind the making of the movies. I'm not saying you have to throw away all your diapers that have Mickey Mouse on them. Uh, people gave us Disney diapers. I use them because they're just getting pooped on anyways. That's all they're good for. But people should be aware that Disney is devilish and try your best to keep it out of your house. Your kids are going to see it at school and at the store. You aren't going to escape the evils of this world until the rapture. But you don't have to just accept the world without putting up a fight. But number four, Disney is devilish because the stories are only satanic counterfeits. Anything entertaining found in Disney movies can be found in the pages of a King James Bible. Disney loves to have talking animals in their movies. For those of you who have never read the Old Testament, Balaam's donkey talks to him in Numbers 22. Many Bible teachers believe animals will talk in the Millennial Kingdom as well. Also, Disney entertains with their witch characters, and there are also witches in the Bible. Read about the witch of Endor in 1 Samuel 28, and the Bible haters will quickly say, if the Bible has witches in it, then why is it wrong to watch Disney movies that have witches? Well, because the Bible puts your witchcraft in a negative light, and the Bible points you to holiness. The Disney movies are godless and have witches for the entertainment factor only. And Disney movies have a prince saving a princess and that is one of the main plots of the bible god the father saves israel and jesus christ comes after the bride of christ the whole bible has a good guy which is god and a villain which is the devil and the good guy saves his princess in the end any idea from disney can be found in the bible because there is no new thing under the sun they have Snow White eating a red apple to copy the forbidden fruit that Eve ate in the garden, although I believe it was a grape, and Peter Pan creeps into people's houses, and the Bible talks about men who creep into houses unaware and lead captive silly women laden with sins. Beauty and the Beast is nothing but a copycat of the woman who rides the beast in Revelation 17.7. 7. Uh, Disney has Monsters University. And there are all kinds of monster-like creatures in the Bible. The monsters hide under the children's beds in the movie to scare them. And the devils will go after young people because they are the weakest link, as we've talked about before, where the devil got in the person when they were a child. If you are entertained by strange creatures, then read about the lion-like men of Moab or the giants with six fingers and six toes. The devilish locusts that come up out of the bottomless pit in Revelation chapter 9. All this stuff's in the Bible. The only difference is the Bible is true and Disney is fake. Disney has the Lion King. The Bible has the Lion of the tribe of Judah who is King of Kings, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Disney has the movie Cars. The Bible talks about cars before they were even invented. Read Nahum where it says that chariots shall be with flaming torches in the days of his preparation. Uh, Disney has movies about giants like the BFG. The Bible has giant characters like Goliath and Og, king of Bashan. Uh, Disney has Finding Nemo, but the Bible has Fishers of Men. 
and Jonah and the whale. Disney has Toy Story, but the Bible has the book of Revelation that talks about the image of the Antichrist that gets life, just like these images in Toy Story have life. I didn't know this, but recently found out that Star Wars are Disney movies now. But the Bible has this too, Darth Vader or some Star Wars character says the force be with you. While the book of Daniel talks about the Antichrist honoring the God of forces. And angels in the Bible are referred to as stars many times. And the book of Judges says the stars in their courses fought against Sisera. That's Star Wars. And so is the battle between Michael and his angels versus the devil and his angels. That's Star Wars. Anything Hollywood has, the Bible has something even better. I hope I have made you realize Disney is devilish. I haven't even scratched the surface. You'll be able to find something wicked in almost every Disney movie. If you aren't saved, the main priority shouldn't be getting rid of your Disney movies, but rather believing the gospel. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, and it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. The gospel is this. Jesus died, he died for me, he was buried, and he rose again the third day. He died by shedding his blood. If you want to have your sins taken away, then you need to be washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5, 9 says, Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. You need a Savior because you are a sinner. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. These sins have separated you from God. The only way to get peace with God is through believing the gospel that I just read. The death, burial, burial and resurrection. Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. Acts 16.31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You could only be saved by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Come to him as a guilty sinner and quit relying on being a good person and living a good life to get you to heaven. You need to realize you can't save yourself and Jesus Christ is the only one with saving power. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We aren't saved by praying a prayer or by asking to be saved. If you have believed the gospel, then you were already saved before you even asked to be saved or prayed a prayer. How could you ask Jesus Christ to save you if you didn't already believe in your heart that he could and would save you? The words you said with your mouth were just outward evidence of what took place in your heart. It was out, outward evidence that you had believed the gospel in your heart. But I hope that you will get saved today if you're not and if you're saved Try your best to get rid of your Disney and get those Disney movies out of your life.